We and many like us lucky enough to have this time together and fortunate enough to craft our imaginations and dreams into new marvels for others to behold should take a moment to realize how lucky we are to share this. Lucky we can work within our limited resources and create new things the world has never seen before. Fortunately for us, those limited resources are about to get a little bigger. Hey, welcome to Gamer Guide Channel. I am Roland in Robocraft, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the new update coming out Thursday, January 14th, and this will be the Arrow Flat Cannon release, a brand new weapon designed to take out those nasty Tesseracts and other air vehicles that uh, have been dominating Robocraft as of recently. So we'll be going over the patch notes in the uh, game later on in this match, and I'm also going to be introducing you to three new vehicles I put together and have up on the Robo Shop, the CRF. Uh, that don't have any weapons on them, but they're ready for flat cannons or for SMGs, whatever you'd like to put on them, designed to uh, stand up well against plasma bombers and also ground vehicles. So here's a little sneak peek of uh, what the little GIF was today on the site, uh, showing how these flat cannons work and showing how you can lead in front. They say the explosion is about the same size as a bay that you would build in, so that's pretty big. You're not really going to miss a flyer, which I think should add a pretty interesting dynamic to the game. All right, so let's get started. This is my first vehicle that I called Big Block, as it is basically a giant block, and I wasn't really going for anything that was going to be super sexy looking. I really wanted something effective. So I designed this with the armor separated from its major components and used mostly all blocks. Cubes are the highest armor value, so if you're going up another vehicle and you have the same kind of separation of your armor from the major components, you're going to win most of the time. So going up against other land vehicles and air vehicles is really nice in this vehicle. The only uh, thing is it's a little squirrely on the left and right, but if you get used to it on the cruisers, it's really nice. Um, it also goes over 200 miles an hour. My next vehicle here is called the Dune Shark. It's a little bit more stylishly designed and also uses a little bit lighter armor on the top and prism plating uh, a little bit closer to the major components, but not connected still. So it's still super hardy and uses more SMGs too. So 10 SMGs lets you go up against other tanks even a little bit better than the uh, one mega SMG uh, of the big block. But um, it is a little bit wider in the front, uh, but great vehicle also up on the CRF now. And then finally, I have the hovercraft version of the other two. This is called the AA-9 Dune Ray, also something I have up on the CRF if you're interested in this. Uh, it doesn't go quite as fast as the other robots. Here in this match, I'm actually speeding up the footage a little bit, but it has the ability to climb up walls and mountains really easily as it has a lot of thruster placement and still gets up to about 137 miles an hour at overclock 13. Uh, which is not too shabby, definitely uh, super tanky and able to go up against the other vehicles as you'll see here in this match. But I figured while we're watching this match, why don't I go over some of the new patch notes coming out tomorrow and talk about some of the bug fixes and stuff. So let's get started here. Coming January 14, 2016, Arrow Flat Cannons. Arrow Flat Cannons are large, high CPU, high armor anti-air cannons focused on dominating a portion of the sky for prolonged periods. Uh, they shoot projectiles in a straight line with travel speed similar to that of plasma, so you need to lead your targets. Uh, it's not like SMGs, basically, where you can hit scan, you need to be in front of them. Uh, like a plasma, or, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's going to be interesting and a different dynamic to the game for sure. Uh, the shots will explode within range of a player who isn't on the ground. The explosion radius is roughly the size of a mega base. So these are big explosions. It's going to be a lot easier to hit uh, people in the sky, especially quick moving uh, flyers. Uh, they deal damage comparable to that of six disintegrator lasers against airborne targets, including race hovers, jumping mechs, and walkers. So anything that's up in the air, if you're a jumper, uh, you risk getting your head blown off by one of these uh, air, uh, one of these uh, aero flat cannons. So watch out for that. It has twice the health of a mega laser and has five connection points, but weighs considerably more. So this is going to be a little harder to uh, put up airborne. Uh, I guess you could probably do it with enough helicopter blades, but uh, you're only going to have half the firepower against our ground targets. So it's definitely something you're going to want to put on a tank, uh, track, or possibly a cruiser or mech legs. I think those are probably your best options as the uh, other walker legs are a little bit lightweight and may not be able to hold too many of these things very well. But who knows? We'll have to try it out tomorrow. Uh, let's go into other improvements now in the patch notes. Uh, they've pushed back the fog to increase view distance for terrain. So you can see enemies 
that are in the distance a little bit easier. And if you can see them, you can shoot them. So this is going to make things a little bit easier for uh, people who are using rail guns or SMGs or plasmas to uh, hit people across the map. And I think it's going to probably have the most effect for people who have rail guns. So that should be interesting and uh, maybe make rail guns just a little bit better as I've heard a lot of people saying that they're not as good as they used to be. Next item here says push shift plus backspace to display your FPS and various system specs. So you can kind of do your own self-checking, see what kind of frame rate you're getting in the new game. So that should be welcome. Uh, next item here is increase the size of the health bar and username in battle so you can see uh, better and identify the wounded. Um, so that's kind of nice. Before it was a little hard to see the names, I would say, of teammates and enemies, but now it'll just be a little bit easier. So that's definitely an improvement I'm welcoming. Uh, here we say, uh, it says, improve the frequency of robot saves so changes are not lost between menus. So basically, if you've ever built a robot and gone into a practice game and then seen that part of your robot is not there, that uh, has less of a chance of happening now. So that's a very welcome change as that's actually happened to me a couple of times. Very annoying when you're building something super cool, took a lot of time to prison plate it, and then half of it disappears. Uh, next patch note here is improved single player robot selection so weaponless robots are never selected. So that should be uh, interesting and probably a welcome too. And uh, so we'll see how that affects things. Robots are no longer tagged with classes. Uh, with ever increasing components, options, and various builds possible in Robocraft, we've le uh, we felt we'd leave the discussion of naming robot classes down to the community instead of trying to identify each one uniquely. So that should be interesting. And maybe in a future patch, we will actually be able to uh, choose what kind of class we say we are. Um, of course, that could also be used um, as an advantage to kind of trick the enemy by renaming your uh, class something else. We'll see if that becomes a thing in the future. Uh, but the next note here is spotting an enemy robot has been changed to say enemy spotted. So you're not going to get this distinct class uh, anymore like it used to be in older Rebelcraft. Then now it's just enemy spotted, which is fine. Makes uh, team speak maybe a little bit more important than it used to be. Uh, the next note here says, as per the previous post on the forum and our social channels, RP is now capped at 9,099,900,099,999. Uh, so you can't get to a billion. You're basically one under a billion. And uh, so that should change things. Uh, next item here, it says the Avalanche robot is now centered when purchased. And uh, after that, it says the info stream, bottom right of the screen, now appears in the uh, selected robot menus. Okay, well, that will look a little different. Uh, Megabots will now be shown with correct cannot enter message when attempting to enter league battles. So that's good. Uh, I guess it said something different before, but now with the space we'll see, you cannot enter league battles. Uh, next item here is uh, wheel tool tips updated. So it gives you a little bit more specifics on top speed and stuff. Well, that's real good. Uh, improve the grip and tracks while climbing uh, steep hills. So tracks are going to be a little bit better. Uh, so if you're wanting to climb hills or you didn't like them before because you couldn't quite get up steep enough uh, inclines, you might give them another run. And then finally it says uh, arrow rods thumbnails have been updated. So I guess they'll look a little bit different in the graphics when you're selecting them from the buy menu. All right, let's get into the bug fixes now. Uh, fixed a bug which caused the rectifier audio to keep playing after the rectifier robot has been killed. So that's good because that would be really annoying if it continued to play that sound effect. Next here it says fix the bugs what caused robots to fly around randomly if their walker leg is healed while rectifying. Ah, I've never seen that one before but I have uh, seen bugs where I've been stuck in the ground when my legs come back and you kind of do like the robo dance. So I'm not sure if that's also going to be fixed but that would be great if it was. Uh, fix a bug which allowed components to be placed right next to each other, ignoring build collisions. So that's interesting. I know uh, we ran into this a couple of times, uh, me and some friends who've played. So I'm glad to see that would be, in, would be getting fixed as it's becoming kind of a problem with people exploiting that. So looking forward to that change. Uh, fix an issue which occasionally stop players from obtaining new garage lots. That would be really annoying. I hadn't actually run into that, but... Uh, I guess if you are getting near the cap, there possibly could be an error and uh, you don't get your robots or your garage slots, so that'd be bad. Uh, fix various memory leaks. Reduce the occurrence of frame stalls during battle. So maybe it's not always lag that we're finding in the game. It could be frame stalls and I guess they smoothed that out. So we'll see what the performance looks like when the patch goes live tomorrow. Fix an issue causing platoon chat icon not to highlight correctly in single player. 
All right, so that's a nice improvement. Fixed the holes in terrain on Neptune 3. I actually had not run into those, but I guess there is a couple here and there which you could possibly th uh, fall through, so uh, that's nice, as uh, that's never fun to be under the map. Fixed a bug which caused the mothership to disappear when a uh, friend leaves a private chat. I hadn't run into that, but um, I guess some people have. So we'll see what that's like now. Fixed a bug causing tank tracks to infinitely increase movement speed the more you had. So basically, um, that Rosefall robot and some others that I've seen out there aren't going to work if you stack on those little uh, tank tracks anymore. So, oh well. I hope you guys had fun with that while it lasted. Um, he also fixed a bug causing tank tracks to not touch the ground to increase max speed. So uh, I know Verdant Dragon had kind of checked that out and come up with a technique of uh, inverting the tank tracks. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that's not going to work anymore. So uh, unfortunate, I guess, in a way. But maybe they'll come out with some other components to do something similar. And there's always hovers. Keep that in mind. Uh, fixed a bug which allowed nanos to destroy electroplate shields extremely easily. I think I noticed this in single player most, more than anything else. And I've also just noticed that electroplates in single player don't seem nearly as tough as they do in the actual game. So I'm not sure if that's a bug, but I didn't see that addressed here correctly. Uh, the next item says, fix a bug which caused a black screen on occasion when leaving battles while in friend chat. So uh, I guess if you were uh, in friend chat and uh, you get the black screen of doom uh, if you were in friend chat. So uh, I know a couple times that's happened. I just didn't really associate those things together. So fix a bug uh, which stopped wheels from spinning when not touching the ground. So basically that's just going to... Um, make it a little bit easier. I think it was just a graphic improvement, but if it actually stopped wheels from spinning, it could definitely make your uh, robots spe uh, spin out a lot easier. And I have noticed that the cruisers do have a tendency to uh, peel out pretty pretty often, so that could be an improvement there. Uh, fixed the mirror, uh, the mirroring of spiked electroplates as they previously mirrored incorrectly. So I actually picked up some of those spiked electroplates off the CRF. You might check it out yourself if you haven't gotten them, but they're uh, kind of cool looking and now uh, they'll place a little bit easier. They are basically the uh, what used to be tier 5 electroplates with some spikes added onto them. Uh, fixed a bug which caused a constant buzzing sound after the capturing of a team deathmatch base. So uh, basically when you win you get to hear the buzzing of bees or something afterwards so I'm glad that's been fixed. And uh, here's another note it says fix an issue allowing for megabots to enter platoons though they still couldn't enter battles while platoon. All right, so I guess you could technically be in a platoon, but you just couldn't get anything done. But they just worked it out just in case uh, someone found the glitch around that. And the final fixed note here is a fix an error bug which showed the test robot shortcut incorrectly in edit mode. I also wanted to give a quick shout out here to the Gaming Kit official. We played some games today, but the audio unfortunately didn't turn out very good on his side on my computer. But he also recorded some of me in it. Uh, they were all pretty much a disaster as we lost lots of games today. Uh, but we still had fun. And so if you guys are interested um, in seeing another YouTuber's uh, Robocraft content and want to see some games we play together, that's going to be on uh, the Gaming Kid official uh, YouTube site. So check that out. Uh, so anyway guys, that's it for this episode. Uh, if you want to check out some of those robots I posted, uh, keep in mind they're uh, named AA8 Big Block, AA9 uh, Dune Ray, and then finally AA10 Dune Shark. Uh, the one you're looking at right now, the Dune Ray, is the uh, only hovercraft out of them. The other ones are a little bit faster robots, uh, but you can find them all on the CRF. So if you guys are new here, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel helps me out and um, get real close to 4,000 subscribers so I'd appreciate that and also leaving a like uh, lets me know you guys are engaged and lets me know you guys want to see some more Robocraft videos which I'd very much appreciate so please do that and let me know what you think of the new patch are you one of the people in the camp of you thinking it's going to be overpowered or are you somebody who's really looking forward to showing those flyers what's up with these uh, new uh, flat cannons which would really be pretty tough and uh, deal a major blow to the air power that's been dominating the game so i for one i'm looking forward to it and uh, we'll see how it all turns out tomorrow so come back soon for some more uh, robocraft fallout 4 and reassembly videos here on gamer guide channel and until next time take care and i'll see you guys in the next episode later <laughs>